Hello, my name is Dr. Funda Goldman. I'm a licensed naturopathic physician with a private practice in Stratford, Connecticut. And today I'm going to discuss marma therapy and specifically the Ayurvedic energy points on the crown of the head. So this is part of an ongoing series on marma therapy. Note of caution before we get too far along. The information presented here is for educational purposes only and should not be considered medical advice. For any symptoms that are severe or worsening, please contact a qualified healthcare professional. It is always important to determine the root cause of any disease and to develop a comprehensive treatment plan of which marma therapy can be a part. Uh, just briefly about marma therapy, it's more than 5,000 years old and comes from Ayurveda or traditional Indian medicine. It's considered an energy therapy, and there are 107 marma points on the body. Um, it's You can kind of think of it as Ayurvedic acupressure, although it comes again from the Indian tradition, not the Chinese tradition, and it's a non-invasive therapy. Um, if you're interested in more history, you can check out my first video on marma, which is the marma points on the hand, and if you're generally interested in this kind of contact uh, content, you can check out my Marma or Ayurvedic um, playlist. So we have three points to talk about today, and I'm going to talk about how to locate them first because they're actually fairly close together. So to find the first point, which is called Brahmarandra, what you can do is take your hand flat and place the bottom of your hand, so like your little pinky finger about where your eyebrows are and then stack your other hand on top of the first hand. So you've got um, your both of your hands flat, and if you kind of are making a ladder with your fingers, you've got eight fingers sort of climb up. So um, these eight fingers are in Sanskrit eight anguli. Um, this is how you find the first point. So basically eight fingers width above the eyebrows, above the glabella, muscle. This is your for, first point, Brahmarandra. Okay, so just check out here. You can actually kind of do this as, as I talk about it. So put your finger in the Brahmarandra and then we'll go to the second point on the next slide. So from Brahmarandra, the first point, what you're going to do is you're going to take two fingers, put it behind where your first finger is on Brahmarandra, so two anguli, two fingers behind point one, and this is going to be, then you take the first finger that you have on Brahmarandra, move it back behind the two, two other fingers, and you'll be at the second point, which is called Murni or Adipati. Okay, and kind of a second way to check that you're in the right area is the second point, Murni or Adipati, there are two names for the same thing. It basically is in alignment with the apex of the ears. So if you take your finger, if you're at point number two, Mordhani or Adipati, and then you slide it down the side of your head, <laughs> you should just about be um, at the apex of the ears. So that's kind of a secondary point. Okay, so put your finger on point number two, Mordhani, Adipati, and then we'll continue on the next slide to point number three. So the fur, the, your finger is now on point number two, Mordhani, Adipati, if you take two fingers and put it behind point number two, and then take the finger that's on point number two and put it behind the two fingers you just lie down, you'll be on point number three, which is called Shiva Rundra. So Shiva Rundra is two anguli or fingers behind point number two. Okay, so basically all three of these points are on the midline of the scalp. And again, it goes Brahmarandri two fingers back, you're going to be at Mordhani, Adipati, two fingers more back, and you're going to be at the third point, or Shiva Rundra. All right, so that's how you locate the three points. Now let's talk about what they each do. So the first point, Brahma Rundra, uh, that translates as to opening to Brahma, which is the sort of universal creative energy. Again, it's located at the midline of the scalp, eight anguli, or eight fingers above the glabella or eyebrows. The energies that this point invokes are the pranavayu, udanavayu, sanaka pitta, and tarpaka kapha. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that this part, the energies that I list here, 
are not essential to understand what these points do, but if you're a deeper student of Ayurveda, it will kind of help things make a little more sense. Um, for example, Sadaka Pitta, this is this point here, Brahma Rondra, this is essentially a Sadaka Pitta point. Pitta is a kind of fire, and Sadaka Pitta is the fire of the body that includes transformation of sensory input and making meaning from that. So things that we see with our eyes, how do we translate those images that are created on the screen of our mind into meaningful thoughts or actions or beliefs, that sort of thing. Okay, so um, this point is responsible and can be used for improving cerebral circulation. So things such as cerebral spinal fluid, um, uh, people who are recovering from strokes, so if there's been problems with um, uh, cardiovascular circulation in the brain, and also intracranial pressure, because of course those are related to fluids in the brain. Also, this point is responsible for different kinds of consciousness, so syn syncope, so if you are faint for some reason, or even insomnia is another kind of consciousness, um, those two uh, states of being can be helped um, by working with this point. Um, also, things like ADHD, memory, and seizures, those um, conditions can be helped with this point. Because this point is basically over the frontal lobe, most conditions, um, or nervous system conditions affecting the frontal lobe can be helped with this point. Um, also, it's not too far away from the pituitary gland, so that can be helped here. It can help different kinds of headaches. Um, so tension headaches behind the eyes, sinus headaches, frontal headaches, so in the forehead, and also migraines. So we're looking at headaches and basically the front part of the head, front upper part of the head. Um, and again, because this is the frontal lobe and because this is sadhaka pitta, or the transformational perception energy, fiery energy of the mind, um, people who are experiencing impaired judgment or reasoning can be helped with this point. It can also help to promote creativity and intelligence because again, the frontal lobe is involved with all sorts of, you know, those complex um, cerebral functions that basically develop our personality or create our personality. This point is also good for calming the mind and emotions. And again, as I mentioned, because this point is primarily a sonica pitta point, um, it's helpful with, with transformation of different kinds. So knowledge into wisdom, transforming emotions into compassion, transforming feelings into consciousness. So basically it's a um, helpful for the mind, heart, and spirit. And then as sort of a random, <laughs> seemingly random um, other function that it has is that it helps with hiccups, probably because it has some relationship with the vagus nerve. So point number two, or Mordni or Adipati, Mordni translates to moment to moment, as in moment to moment consciousness. And Adipati translates to first master. So again, this is on the midline of the scalp, and this is two anguli or fingers posterior or behind point number one. And it's also, this point is in line with the apex of the ear. So it's another way to double check that you're in the right location. So the energies um, supported by this point are the prana vayu, the udana vayu, the vyana vayu, the apana vayu, sadaka pitta, and tarpaka kapha. So indications for this point so if the first point, uh, Brahmarandra, was more of a fire pitta energy center, this one is more of a pranavayu or wind center. So most of the things associated with this um, point are going to be windy in nature if you follow Ayurveda, so very vatagenic um, or vata type conditions. So um, there's a lot of overlap though with the first point. So circulation again, Cerebral spinal fluid, stroke, intracranial pressure can be helped. Consciousness, syncope, insomnia, attention, concentration, confusion, ADHD, memory, and seizures, and again, the frontal lobe. There's also hormonal um, effects on the pituitary and pineal glands, different kinds of headaches, tension headaches, and now we're, the, the location of the headaches is moving slightly. So tension and sinus and migraines are the same, but vertex. So now we're getting headaches on the top of the head instead of frontal headaches. And because this is a, you know, a vayu or vata, more of a vata point, we're going to see here conditions that affect, that are affected, affect the sensory motor coordination, any kind of dysfunction in this area. So 
uh, muscle spasms or flaccid, flaccid, <laughs> flaccidity, um, twitching, you know, just general sensory motor coordination, like maybe an MS type situation. Um, also the ears, because this point is the closest to the ears, um, auditory and vertigo functions related to the ears can be helped. It also helps with some of the, some of these things, next things are going to be related to cranial nerves that are descending from the brain. So uh, throat, speech, heart palpitations, again, vagus nerve, phonic nerves, that sort of thing. The respiratory system ranging from sinus and nasal congestion and nosebleeds down to asthma, so into the lungs itself. So upper respiratory and lower respiratory symptoms can be helped with this point. GI can also be helped with this point, specifically nausea and vomiting. This point is also good for calming the mind and emotions. It also, um, because of the apana vayu uh, relationship, it actually helps with lower body functions such as ingu ingu inguinal hernias and also prolapse organs such as a bladder or uterus. And then again, because this is more of a wind point, and the wind is subtle, right? And is one of the characteristics of wind is that it's subtle. You can't see it. You can you can see the effects when the trees rustle their leaves, but you can't actually see the wind itself. So this point is actually good for helping the subtle body. Um, and and what this translates to is like it can actually activate your chakras, which are energy centers. If you're involved in yoga, this will probably be meaningful to you. And it can actually support your spiritual development and also even your psychic abilities. Um, because again, this uh, Mordni Adipati point, you know, the reason why it's considered the first master um, in moment to moment is that, um, you know, again, this is sort of your connection to a higher power, whether you want to call it the universe or God or nature or whatever you want to call it. This is sort of our literally like uppermost point to connect with higher power. So um, higher level um, subtle functionings of the um, mind and being can be supported with this point. The third point is called Shiva Randra, um, and this translates to opening to Shiva. Shiva represents the um, kind of transformative or kind of ending um, energy energies of the universe. And again, this point is also on the midline of the scalp and it's two angulae um, posterior or behind point number two, Adipati, that we just talked about. The energies invoked by this point are Pranavayu, Sarka Pitta, and Tarpaka Kapha. So the main energy of this point though is Tarpaka Kapha. So this is mostly an earth point. The first one, Brahmarandra, is mostly a fire point. The second one, Mordni Adipati, is mostly a fire point excuse me, a wind point, and this third one is mostly an earth point. So again, some similarities with the other points that we've mentioned, circulation, CSF, stroke, intracranial pressure, consciousness such as insomnia, ADHD, memory, hormone pituitary specifically, headaches. Now you'll see that again, the location's changing because all Marma points, as I mentioned in my other videos, have local effects. So these headaches are going to be tension headaches and parietal, so side of the head headaches and occipital headaches, headaches in the back of the head, and migraines. And again, because this point is the closest to the back of the head, it can also be helpful with uh, the meninges, such as meningeal irritation, uh, which is basically a durable lining that's a, that protects the brain and the spinal cord. Um, neck pain, cervical spondylosis, so basically the cervical neck um, area, cervical spine area is helped with this point or can be helped at this point. The ears, it's also fairly close to the ears, so vertigo and tinnitus, for example, can be helped with this point. And it's also good for calming the mind and emotions, specifically with this one, vata type of emotions, such as grief and PTSD. So Tarpika Kapha, Again, not to get too much into it, I probably need to do more videos on all the sub doshas. But Tarpika Kapha is sort of um, like our memory bank. You know, it's that kind of almost like our personal Rosetta Stone. <laughs> you know, the things that are kind of locked in our memory um, because that's an earthy energy, right? Because earth is sort of heavy and constant and solid. And so, unfortunately, that can be a problem though, is that if you have bad memories and have trouble shifting out of that um, negative energy that's associated with these previous memories. So actually this point would 
can be particularly good for things like grief and PTSD, so kind of negative, sad memories from the past. So I'm going to summarize here, again, a lot of functioning because, again, this is the brain we're talking about here. And it's actually going to take two slides. So the first slide is actually going to go through the central effects. And then the second slide is going to go through the peripheral effects. So all three points are good for cerebral circulation, um, especially the first two points are good for consciousness such as syncope, all three points are good for insomnia, and all three points are good for ADHD. Attention, concentration, and confusion, those sorts of issues are best um, helped through point number two, Morden or Adipati. Memory is helped with all three. Seizures are best um, with point one and two. Frontal lobe, one and two, because it's the closest. All three can help hormonal issues. All three can help with headaches, but again, depending on where the headache is or the type of headache, you want to look at the previous slides to look at the details, important details on that. Um, impaired judgment and reasoning, again, that's frontal lobe stuff, so that's going to be point one. Creativity intelligence, again, frontal lobe stuff, point number one. Calming the mind and emotions, all three. The transformational energy, again, that's going to be one because point number one was the fire point, remember? Um, sensory motor coordination, that's going to be point number two. Spirituality, right? Clear, sort of clear, subtle energies, that's going to be point number two, our main wind or vata point. Um, yeah, so these are going to be what I consider sort of the central effects, so mostly sort of like encapsulated in the skull in the brain itself and then we'll continue on to the next slide for peripheral effects so again it's the brain so it's controlling the rest of the body and so there are some peripheral effects associated with these points so if you look at this list though almost all the points are from point number two so if you look at this list, hiccups, ears, throat, heart, respiratory, GI, lower body, meninges, neck, cervical, spine. The only one that's corresponding with point number one, Brahmarandra, is hiccups. Remember I said that was sort of an odd, weird, random, seemingly random one. I mean, the brain, you know, does run the vagus and phrenic nerves down there, which helps to control the diaphragm. But that's really the only peripheral effect from point number one. Um, Ears, throat, specifically speech, heart, specifically palpitations, respiratory, no sinus lungs, GI, nausea, vomiting, lower body, hernia, and prolapsed organs. Remember, we talked about these things. These are all point number two. So almost everything else on the list, um, with the exception of, so what's left for point number three, or Shiva Rundra, the ears. That's also close. So two and three are closest to the ears. So those are good for ear issues. And then again, number three is closest to the back of the head, so the meninges, right, the protective covering for the brain and the spine. Also neck issues and cervical spine issues are going to be point number three. So that's another way of kind of organizing and sifting through this information, so it hopefully um, is easier to remember. So that's it for crown points. Um, only three, but they do a lot. Um, so hopefully this is helpful in introducing them to you or just um, helping you organize, you know, what they do and how they can affect uh, different condi conditions, especially um, in the head <laughs> um, or, you know, originating from the head. So thank you for your time and until the next one. Take care.